Sometimes in strategic business reporting, you get tested on the basic accounting standards that some of you have studied at the lower level. My name is Tom Clendon and I help students pass the SBR exam. And that means I teach everything that you need to know to pass the SBR exam. And this edition of my podcast is dealing with depreciation, is dealing with the revaluation of PPE, topics which are also taught at FR at the lower level, but can also be retested at SBR. And when they are retested at SBR, I think of it as easy marks. I think of it as low hanging fruit, but it's only easy if you know it. So first of all, I'm going to recap on the theory. And then I've got a couple of examples to demonstrate how the numbers might play out. Depreciation. PPE, property, plant and equipment with a limited useful life has to be depreciated, has to be systematically written off over that useful life with a charge to the P&L in accordance with the matching concept. You will charge depreciation even if the asset has gone up in value. You will charge depreciation even if you have actually revalued that asset. You can charge depreciation on the straight line method or the reducing balance method, but they are methods. They are not the accounting policy. So if you switch between straight line and reducing balance or vice versa, that is not a change in accounting policy. That does not lead to a prior period adjustment. You do not depreciate land because land has an indefinite life. Revaluation. You have to charge depreciation, but you don't have to revalue your PPE. That is an accounting policy choice. And companies who take that accounting policy choice must be thinking that they're making their accounts more relevant, more useful more predictive by showing the asset in the accounts at what it could be sold for. But not everybody does, presumably because some companies think they're never going to sell these assets. So what's the point in revaluing them? But if you do revalue PPE, you have to revalue all the assets in the same class and you have to keep those revaluations up to date. So if you revalue one factory, you have to revalue all of your factories. Now, the accounting treatment. Basically, gains go to equity. Yeah, revaluation gains go to equity and are included in other comprehensive income, not in a P&L. Now, there is an exception that they would gains, revaluation gains can be in the P&L, but only if they represent a reversal of a loss that was previously recognised in the P&L in respect of that asset. Losses, well, they go to equity. They go to, they get included in other comprehensive income. And again, there's an exception, unless the loss Uh, has exhausted the revaluation reserve in equity relating to that asset, then the further excess has to go against profit, has to be charged to the P&L. Let me give you a simple example of that asset, of that revaluation rule. Let's imagine there's an asset which originally land that originally cost 100 and has now been revalued to 150. So it's in the books at 150. It's in the books at 150. Cost 100, in the books at 150. So that 50 would have been dealt with correctly in equity. But now it's revalued to 90. So it's in the books at 150. It's revalued to 90. So your loss is 60. The first port of call for the loss is to take the loss to equity. But you've only got a reserve of 50. So you wipe out the reserve. And then you charge the further 10 to the profit and loss account. With a carrying value of 150, having previously revalued it from 100, 
with a fair value now, a market value now of 90, your loss is 60. You're crediting the asset by 60, writing it down to 90. And then you're charging effectively 50 against equity and 10 through the P&L. If that asset subsequently goes up in value, the first 10 would be recognized as a gain in the P&L because it would be an exception. It would be a reverse of a loss that had been previously charged to the P&L. I'd like to give you a second example. Let's think about PPE which cost 20,000 with a 10 year life. And at the year end, we revalue it to 30. So the PPE cost 20, has a 10 year life, but at the year end is worth 30,000. So what's the depreciation charge and what's the gain? Well, you would charge depreciation over the asset's life. And during the year, the assets there are a cost of 20 with a 10 year life. So during the year, you would charge depreciation or the depreciation expense would be 2,000, one tenth of 20,000. This gives you a carrying value of 18 at the year end. So when you now revalue it to 30,000, the uh, gain is 12. And that gain would be recognized directly in equity, would be included and reported in other comprehensive income. If you love your double entry for depreciation, that's an expense, reduces profit, debit P&L. Yeah, and credit the asset, reduces the carrying value of the asset by two. The gain of 12, on the other hand, because the carrying value was 18, we're now revaluing it to 30. The gain of 12 increases the asset, debit the asset, and is a credit to the revaluation reserve, other components of equity, a credit directly to equity. And that 12 is also included in other comprehensive income. As an aside, no cash flow. Yeah, no cash flow. There's no movement of cash either with depreciation or revaluation. As an aside, that revaluation gain has no impact on the earnings per share. And as an aside, when we have revalued that asset to 30,000, next year, the depreciation charge will be based on that 30,000. Next year, it will only have a nine year life remaining and there will be a larger depreciation charge because you will take the 30,000, you will divide that by nine years and that will give you a bigger depreciation charge than you otherwise would have had if you'd stuck with historical cost because if you stuck with historical cost, the depreciation would only be two. So revaluation in the long term ultimately reduces your earnings per share because you're going to be charging more depreciation through the P&L. And revaluation ultimately, although it reduces gearing, yeah, although it reduces gearing, it has increased the capital employed and therefore reduces your return on capital employed. It's important, I think, always to be able to explain the consequences of accounting policies to investors. That's what we mean by investor focus. Listen, my name is Tom Clendon. Yeah. And my WhatsApp number is in the UK 07725 350793. I have a website where you can gain access to additional resources. www tomclendon.co.uk. I live, I breathe, SBR. If I can help you pass SBR, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you very much.